everyone. Hello. Welcome back. This is day four. This is Thursday. The last, this is actually Friday for people in California, but uh, we still have, we get to go another day tomorrow here. Uh, but this is our review day for the uh, meditation experiment. And as a starting point, um, what are your thoughts in California? Was it worth it? Does it make sense? Anyone? Bueller? <laughs> Bueller? <laughs> Is anyone there? <laughs> Anybody have any comments in Santa Fe Springs about our experiment doing meditation? It's an experiment, so we need feedback. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, no. Okay. Comments. And everybody's saying that they loved it. They loved it. That sounds like Trevona. Right on. <laughs> you see our class? It we saw, we saw everything. <laughs> okay. So how about muting and Stephanie? What about Long Beach? What are the thoughts? Pretty nice. Pretty nice. <laughs> Meditation was pretty nice. Mm -hmm. How about, can you, can you add some more words to that? Mm -hmm. is, is it worth doing? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Always good to meditate. Okay. <laughs> now, who was that? Jacqueline? Yes. Okay. <laughs> is um, Jerome there today? Is he in today? No. He's not here. Thank God. It. Um, okay. Well, let's talk about a couple housekeeping things. I think everybody should have seen the event. Can you pull up your Gmail here, please, everyone? Go into your Gmail. Do you guys have internet? Yeah. Okay. So everybody go into their Gmail. Let's look at the event today. What is the first housekeeping item? Oh, did you get pulled out from back? Hmm. Max Olivia talked. Max Olivia talked. Okay. This happened yesterday, too. I was working out there. Okay, Stephanie, can you hear me? Okay, good, because my screen is sort of frozen here. Um, okay, so Max Oliva. So I, I had posted something saying that Max Oliva will be doing the Hangout on Air next Thursday. It's actually not next Thursday. It is on the 27th. It's two Thursdays, not next Thursday. It's the Thursday after that. So our Hangout next Thursday will be Chapter 3 in the book uh, Beatitudes for the Workplace. We will make sure that by Monday of that week, we're gonna we're gonna spend Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of that week going over um, the book, Max Oliva's background, what he's all about, and how it is related to the school. So that's what we're gonna be doing in two weeks. And when he is live, when he's here to hang out on air, we want to encourage everybody to participate because this is your opportunity to talk to the author of the book and it's something that will be very important very good for your your career no you don't have the book there you'll have the chapter okay you'll have the chat everybody will have the chapter and the introduction uh, and everything else they need it's not hard reading it's good reading uh, it's very simple straightforward okay now, Hangout 
I mean, uh, house cleaning item number two. Last week, we were in, uh, last Thursday, uh, Sherry Kennedy and I went to Long Beach. And uh, we met with the representatives from the VA. Because we go to the VA, somebody from the schools at the VA virtually every Wednesday. And because we're there doing things, trying to help out, they decided to come and see the school. And um, based upon their visit, they gave us some information that will be helpful to everyone. And the bottom line is that anybody who's a veteran who is not employed but would like to go to school and start getting paid eight dollars an hour there are there are two programs that they can do it there's two programs that veterans who want to go to school and get paid while they're going to school now note it's not getting paid to go to school it's getting paid while they're in school they will get paid eight dollars an hour for up to 40 hours a week um, we, there are two programs, and we want you, all students, if you know any veterans uh, that want to go back and learn so that they can earn and not yearn, um, you know, get their information. What you will receive, in addition to feeling good about it, everybody who does that will get $500, $500 bonus for that. So if you know anybody, any veterans, who are not working, that want to go back to school and get paid while they're in school, this is a great government program. The, um, uh, yeah, so the, the key thing is they have to, they could not have been less than honorably discharged. So that means they could have a general discharge or an honorable discharge and uh, as many students in pos as possible, and the same thing down here. In fact, Rick is going to be working with Mo Bedard. Mo Bedard is our veteran rep, our vet rep. He was a uh, retired as a major in the Air Force. He is the vet rep, and so Rick is doing some work with Mo. And any students that we get signed up in this program, you will earn $500. And so one of the things that I was told uh, by the Veterans Administration people is if you go to places where veterans are, veterans kind of like to hang out in places. If you go to places where veterans are, this could be a lot. Hustle. Yeah, if you hustle. <laughs> Not a hustle, if you hustle. Uh, the, uh, there could be a lot of people signed up. So this is an opportunity for all of us to help veterans the latest statistic I was told by our uh, president is that there are 45,000 homeless uh, Afghanistan, Iraq veterans, 45,000. And the VA wants to help them, but um, and they have certain benefits, but this program, this work-study program, for a veteran to qualify, they have to be at least have a general discharge and they have to be in school. And we will make arrangements that school will have a program that's 20 hours a week for these people. So um, tomorrow, Sherry's going to be with the, the Nevada State Agency um, to get a new class that's four hours a day, or it's 20, uh, yeah, four hours a day. Um, so we'll have that class in these. So if they're veterans, they can go to school 20 hours a week and they can work up to 40 hours a week. And so, uh, you know, Rob, what would you say Brad's feeling would be if he could be getting paid $8 an hour? If he was getting 300 bucks a week? He'd be rich, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> he'd be, instead of $28 a week, he'd be getting 300 Okay, so let's go back and talk about uh, now our thing of meditation. And so, Saul, what does that first paragraph say? Why don't you read that? Because you're used to doing this, right? Here, in the study group. Yeah. Prior to reviewing what we learned, we will discuss whether it is worth adding to our toolbox of skills, including typing, MS Office, QuickBooks, MCP, Med Terminology, Google Apps, etc. The important thing with our tools, as with all tools, is to know how to use the tools and when to use the tools. 
Okay, so the starting point is meditation is a tool. Meditation is a tool for work. It is not an end in itself. It's a means to an end. A hammer is a means to an end. What is the what is the end when you're using a hammer? Drive the nail in. Drive the nail in. That's what a hammer is for. What's the end with a screwdriver? Screw, 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 screw something in. Okay. <laughs> what is the end? Yeah, what what is a prick punch used for? <laughs> Does anybody know what a prick punch is? I had metal shop. That was the question the first day. Yeah, so like make a hole. A hole punch yeah. is used for punching holes. What's a prick punch used for? Start a hole. <laughs> it's a joke. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next. Moving on. Um, so, uh, meditation is a tool. What is the end? It's a means to an end. What is the end for a drill? A hole. A hole. And so one of the questions marketing people ask is, why do people buy drills? And it starts with because they want what? They want holes. People buy drills because they want holes. Okay? So it's not because they want the drill. It's not the, the type of the drill, it's the quality, the speed, the, your ability to drill holes. So meditation is a tool like other tools. So in Santa Fe Springs, um, what's another tool that we learn at Larson? In Santa Fe Springs. What's a tool that we learn in Santa Fe Springs? Google. Google, okay. Google Apps, okay. What's another tool? MCP. MCP, good, right. What is another one? QuickBooks. QuickBooks, okay. What's another one? Microsoft. Microsoft what? Office, PowerPoint, Excel. Okay, good. That sounds like Travona. Yeah. Okay, what's another tool? Resume. What? Resume workshop. Okay, right. Okay, so these are all tools. And the important thing about a tool is you need to know what? What did it say, Saul? Uh, how and when to use them. How to, how to use the tool and when to use the tool. So earlier today here in Las Vegas, I mentioned, uh, I, I, I um, repeated a quote. I can't remember who said it, but um, what was the quote, Dave, about hammers? If everything, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. Yeah, so the quote is, if your only tool is a hammer, every problem tends to look like a nail. So if your toolbox has one tool in it, which is a hammer, you're not really going to be too effective. So what you need to do, what you need to think of is, what tool do I use? How do I use the tool is what we teach you here at Larson. You should be very proficient. And... Um, uh, what's the highest typing speed in in uh, California now? Who's the who's the highest the fastest typer in California? Um, I don't know. Rose has stepped out, so I can't tell you who it is in Long Beach. Okay. Uh, Santa Fe Springs. Well, have have some people in Santa Fe Springs just say what their the, their highest. Any anybody over sixty? Yeah. Yeah. Who? Helen. Oh. Helen is said seventy. Who did? Helen. Good. Okay. Great, Helen. That's fantastic. Anybody over seventy? I know Luann is pretty high, but she's not here today, so I can't give you her exact. Okay. Good. So, how many people started under thirty-five and now are faster than thirty-five? What about How many people were under 35 but now they're over 35? I have three or four in. Okay. Five. How many people are less than 20? I don't have any hands. No, nobody? Dennis, we have two. 19. Okay, good. You're right there. You're right there. Who was that? Dennis. About Dennis is at 19. Luis okay. is at 15. Dennis, what did you start at? <laughs> what did you start at, Dennis? 
I started at nine. Nine. I started at nine. And now he's up to 19? Yes. Okay, good. So that's a good improvement. Yeah, boy. And um, how many more weeks do you have, Dennis? Uh, I have like uh, this is eight, about 10. Okay, good. So the goal is to get to 35. And on using this tool, the best way to use this tool is to focus on speed. Do not focus on accuracy right now. Once your brain gets to figure out where the keys are, if you're focusing on speed, your accuracy will improve. But if your focus is on accuracy, your speed is not going to automatically improve. Okay? So the best way to do it is type as fast as you can. And once your fingers get used to where the keys are, it'll all click. Right, Telus? Yes. So Telus started at two words a minute? Six. Six. Telus started. <laughs> Tell us started at, at six, and Tell us has another handicap, which is what? I'm missing a finger. He's missing that yeah. finger right there. <laughs> okay, so it's hard for him to type an L. My granddad was missing that finger. And Tell us broke forty yesterday. After hit forty after what? Thirteen weeks. Fourteen. Okay. Um, so. So that was a great improvement. Uh, so typing is an important skill. Microsoft Office is an important skill. If you don't know these skills, you probably are not going to be employable in an office position or in a lot of uh, even warehouse situations, which we don't, you know, we, we don't train people to work in warehouses. But even in a warehouse situation, if you cannot type, uh, you probably can't do it. Microsoft Office, you need to know how to do. Uh, QuickBooks, if you want to be in accounting, you need to do. Of course, everybody in MCP and the medical terminology in those classes, if you don't know those, you can't get employed. However, knowing those is not enough. Google Apps is the thing that separates you from most of your competitors, and that's the thing employers are going to want to have and want to know. So that's another tool. So it's how to use it and then when to use it interviewing techniques, getting your resume, those are important tools. Creating a perfect resume, that's an important tool. Um, meditation is a tool. So let's talk about the meditation tool. Um, Jacqueline in Long Beach, what, what, is, what type of tool would you say meditation is? Um, the mind. <laughs> it's a what? A meditation. For the mind. Okay, good. And what does it help you do? Um, relax. Okay. And what else? Focus. Focus. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Those are two key things. What else does meditation enable you to do? Sort of like focus. Clear your mind, yeah. You want to uh, you want to eliminate or remove all unimportant things, all things that are distracting you. So it's an important tool, especially when you're under pressure, to be able to use that tool, to be able to be calm. And in work, I will tell you, <clears throat> employers, uh, let's see, uh, Calvin, what are the two things employers want? Yeah, they employers that we focus on want people who are going to make them money or save them money. And uh, oftentimes at work, there are deadlines, things happen, things change, problems occur. The employees who stay productive during those times are the employees who get remembered, who get bonuses, and uh, you know those are the those are the go-to employees. So meditation, by helping you block out unimportant things and focus on important things, meditation is a great tool. And that's something that you should add to your resume. Down under hobbies or other skills, you should add, I wouldn't say add it after four days, but you should continue doing the classes, work on it, and that should be something you add. Because employers who are smart, if you find an employer who meditates and it says on your resume that you meditate, he's going to talk to you or she is going to talk to you about that. 
what type of meditation do you do? Or if you do yoga, what type of, of yoga do you do? How often do you do it? Why do you do it? Where do you do it? You start building a bond, and then they start liking you. And if they like you, they're going to be more inclined to hire you if everything else is equal. If you're just the same as everyone else, they're going to choose the people they like. They're going to choose the people they like because they think those people are going to help them be more effective and productive. So uh, the next question would be, or does anybody in Santa Fe Springs have any comments about meditation? Is Alice there? Or Helen? Does anybody in, in Santa Fe Springs meditate? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Is this something you can do? Yeah. Luann meditates. Luann. Luann meditates, uh, Ed. Who does? Luann? Yes. Great. Good. What type of meditation? Um, I started with Mother Earth meditation, which grounds you and puts your roots out, and it goes right up to your head. So I started with Mother Earth meditation. Okay. So was this a meditation that we did, was it similar to that in any way? Um, somewhat that it's calming. It helps you focus on things. Good, good, okay. And um, what are the negatives? When should meditation not be used? Let's start with uh, Santa Fe Springs. Or how about you? Louis. Uh, I don't think you should use it when you're uh, driving. Oh, yeah, no, don't do it when you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> or trying to take a test. You can focus when you're taking a test, but don't try to meditate. Okay. Or in a job interview. It's not a good time to do so tell us yesterday said he was able to get to 40 partially because of the meditation yeah I mean it, it, it helped me kind of because I carry a lot of baggage with me all the time you know especially all, you know where I'm living and stuff and I bring it a lot with me when I'm doing things and it kind of like cleared me out and I just was just did what I was doing. Okay, and when you got down to the last 30 seconds and you saw you were doing well, you didn't panic. I didn't panic. Yeah, I was getting like four. I was getting like halfway, three quarters of the way through, it, like 37, and then I'm just start like. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going down. Yeah. Hit by a torpedo. Okay. Um, okay. Good. Now, um, so I I can tell you I am very confident if you put meditation on your application and if the person that's interviewing you meditates it will be a big advantage if the person if you put it on your resume and the person doesn't do meditation it will still not hurt you and it will probably help you because they will think oh here's a person who cares about themselves here's a person who cares about their brains uh, I know a little bit about meditation because I've seen it on TV and movies and it's a thing that calms people down, and so that could be good at this, this place. So would it be meditate before an interview, or maybe maybe just as opposed to meditating, do your power posing? Like well, the power posing. Okay, so so tell us said uh, basically how do we fit if in an interview situation? How do we fit meditation in with power posing? So what is the purpose of power posing to do? To create uh, testosterone. And um, cortisone. cortisol. Cortisol. And but what is the what's the benefit of that? To energize you. To okay. Get ramped up. Okay. So it gets you more alert, more aware, but also more calm. Right. The cortisol will calm you down. My hunch is that when you're meditating, you probably do release cortisol too, also. But uh, so if you do power posing your body chemistry is going to improve, right? And if you do meditation, probably your mind will clear and you will be able to focus. You know, but what you don't want to do is go into an interview thinking of everything that could go wrong, right? Or thinking about, you know, your wife just told you that morning as you walked out, by the way, honey, I'm moving out today. 
Not you by you the way, probably honey. don't like. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the way, honey, I'm moving out. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that could be a good thing, but probably <laughs> it's not a good thing, and you certainly don't want to be thinking about that during your interview. Okay. Unless you're going to become, you know, interviewing to be a priest, that might be. Good. <laughs> um, so. Um, so usually meditation is good, as we said, not when you're driving, not when you're doing things where you really need to focus and concentrate. So Tony here played college football, and he pointed out that guys meditate before the game, but it's not good to meditate during the game, or like when you're in, a, in the play, because you need to, you really need to be, uh, uh, have your testosterone going, you need to be able to defend yourself and protect yourself because you could get hurt. So it's not a calming thing. It's not necessarily good when you're playing high-impact sports. Now, let's see, Saul, so let's go back to that thing. What else, what else is on there? Uh, How can we use this tool in conjunction with other tools? Okay, yeah. So how can we use this tool in conjunction with other tools that we've learned? How do we use meditation in conjunction with some other tools? Stephanie, what do you got? What do you have in Long Beach? Stephanie is in with somebody right now, Ed. Okay, good. Jacqueline, what do we have? <laughs> what was the question? Okay, how, can we, how can we use meditation with some of the other tools? And we mentioned other tools, typing, office, Medical claims processing, QuickBooks, medical terminology, uh, Google Apps. How can we use meditation to help us implement or use those tools? Um, by, by focusing. Okay, helps focus, right? Clears your mind. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe before taking a typing test. Uh, maybe before taking a typing test, you meditate for a little bit, clear your mind. Did the um, did the meditation videos, Mark? Did they say anything about how long you need to meditate? Um, no. Does anybody remember anything about that? Like, can you meditate for thirty seconds? I'm no. sure. Yeah. I don't think so. I think it was a few minutes. <laughs> it's going to at least be. To get into it. I think the longer they can do it. The, the, the easier it's going to get to that point. Right. The more you practice, the easier it is for you to get in there. So there would be a couple parts. One is to get into the meditative state, right? But then when you're in the meditative state, that's where the benefits occur, right? That's where you're able to get focus. So I would agree that the better you are at meditating, the faster you can get into that meditative state. The question is, once you're in that meditative state, how many minutes do you think you need to have a benefit? Any ideas? Well, I think it would depend on where you're at and what's going on with you and in your life, and how much garbage that you need to let go of at okay. that point in time. What would be the least amount of time? I agree with you. You could have a lot of stuff. Okay, so Tony says about 10 minutes. What is anybody in Santa Fe Springs have any ideas? What's the least amount of time you need to meditate to be able to get a benefit? Five minutes. Five? Okay. Okay. Good. So, um, you know, perhaps if you're going to take a typing test, you want to meditate, clear your mind before that. So you would need five minutes. Now, would power posing help you taking a typing test? Yeah. And what is power posing? Uh, that is a TED talk that we watched here this morning from a woman named Amy Cuddy. Um, Stephanie can pull up the link on the Las Vegas campus calendar. Okay. I encourage everybody to watch it. It's one of the how would you would you guys say it's one of the top ten or top yeah. twenty? Yeah. Top ten or twenty? Ten. 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 Top ten. It's one of the top ten TED talks that uh, we've watched down here. 
Okay, what else about meditation? What can we talk about regarding meditation? It helps you be more autodidactic because it relaxes you and it helps you to, you know, because a lot of the times to be autodidactic, it's not working on what you know, it's eliminating the problems. And okay, so that's a good point. So tell us that it helps you, can help you become autodidactic. And along those lines, last night my, my daughter had a uh, assignment. Uh, she had a quiz today in high school that had to do with Aristotle, a book that Aristotle wrote. So she went on the internet and went to Wikipedia. You know, instead of just reading it, she spent more time trying to find shortcuts, Cliff Notes, Spark Notes, Wikipedia. She did. You told her to go that read was the book. The and, uh, no, I ended up reading it. Oh. Uh, I ended up reading it. So, She's doing all of these things instead of just reading the things. She's spending a lot of time taking shortcuts, but then she can't absorb the information because she's bouncing back and forth between Spark Notes, Wikipedia, Clip Notes, all of this stuff, and her mind was not clear. She couldn't absorb it. No. No. <laughs> You had to choose one <laughs> and just go with that because it's a quiz, I mean, it's a high school quiz. How, how much could they talk about on Aristotle on a quiz? It's just high level stuff. But her, the problem was she couldn't get her mind to focus. So first it was where do I get the information? Then okay. once she had all of this information, she couldn't decide how to get the information she needed out of all of these different sources. And then she went to the third level of being stressed about being stressed about learning the stuff. I'm never going to learn it because I have too many of these things I need to look at and they don't make sense to me and who cares about Aristotle anyway. Okay? So when you get to that level, you're already self-defeating. Right? When you're at the point of why do I need to do this, you're completely off the assignment. The assignment was, you know, we're going to have a quiz on this thing on Aristotle, and at work you're going to have assignments at work. I think one of the things about meditation is it will enable you to clear your mind and not think about questions like, why are we really doing this? My boss is stupid. He always comes up with <laughs> dumb ideas. And then, so like, remember that Dan Dennett talk where he had the, the cover of the New Yorker magazine, guys looking at a painting? And he writes down everything that goes through the guy's mind. And, he, and at one, some point he says, now he's off to the races because he's so far removed from the painting he's looking at. He's thinking about poodles and barking and uh, you know all kinds of stuff. So meditation will help you stay on the assignment to be focused and do that. So now let's go to the next question is, and this is really for the people in Long Beach, and, and Santa Fe Springs, because we talked about it here. Um, how can we, is it possible to incorporate meditation into the curriculum? Is it possible to incorporate it into the curriculum in California? Is it possible? Patricia, what do you say? Absolutely. Yes. How? How can we fit it in during the day? Uh, I haven't thought about it, but uh, I'll, I'll oh, give yeah. it some thought. Can well, we do it in one in one fifty minute class? One fifty minute on a ten minute break. Maybe you might want to. Okay. Maybe you know we get ten minute breaks on every hour, so maybe you might want to meditate during one of your ten minute breaks. Okay. Well, we got through what class one or class two. So far this week, we've got two. Can you, everybody get through two? And was two as good or better than one? It was same, same, same value. Well, I like three. I actually saw three, but it actually tells you how to um, do the meditation. Okay, so it builds then. Yeah. Right. They keep they keep going forward. Okay. Well, um, so again, for the people here, there. They have to do medical claims processing class. They have to do medical terminology. People are doing QuickBooks. They don't have the same time of it. 
availability that we we do more projects, they do more of that type of stuff. So how can we incorporate it into uh, the curriculum in Long Beach and Santa Fe Springs in California? It's going to be kind of tough because we have, as you stated, here in California, we have a lot more projects going on. Okay, this would be your time span. You come in in the morning at 8.30. 8.30 to 9 o'clock is your typing tutor. Then you have from 9 to 9.30 to do your brain copying your homosity. Then from 9.30 to 9.40, you can get educated. Then 10 o'clock, take right. a 10-minute break. 10 o'clock, we come and we do um, hangouts. Okay. Rose, Rose, how is Crystal doing? Yeah. Yeah. He does I'm sorry, Anna. I didn't hear you. I said, how's Crystal doing? Oh, she's fine. She's very excited this morning. She's seen a hangout on the news. Oh, really? Yes. She texted you about it. Check your messages. What was the hangout about? Uh, they were doing an interview with someone over in the, the news. I'm not sure what channel. And they were doing a hangout. And she was so excited. So she sent Sherry and I and you a text message saying, she, I just saw a hangout on the news. Good. Yeah, <laughs> finally, people are believing me. <laughs> okay, good. Well, that's great. I'm glad to hear Crystal's doing well, too. I will look for that email. Um, okay, so Rose has found a way that California can um, incorporate this into the curriculum. And we're, gonna, we're doing it here at what time? Nine. Next week, we're going to be doing it at nine. So and how so, much time are you guys allotting to that, Ed? What was that? How much time are you allotting to your meditation? Well, uh, I think I heard Rose say 9 to 9.30. No. 9.30 to 10? 9.30 to 9.50. 9.30 to 9.50. 20 minutes. And then, and then everybody should do their best to do this at home. It's not going to hurt you to do it at home. And wake up or, or when you wake up, yeah. So uh, when uh, Max Oliva is here talking, he might talk about things to do right before you go to sleep. You know, the last thing you're conscious of to get your your uh, to get into a good sleep, you might talk about that. So that's a good idea. Or that first 10 minutes when you wake up in the morning, once you've gone through the classes and you know how to do it. Some people do, right. Some people do go back to sleep. Okay, so let's see, what have we missed? So I think that's it. Oh, yeah, we covered all it. Okay, so does anybody have any questions about the housekeeping item number two? Which is called what cell? Do well by doing good. Oh, yeah. Do well by doing good program. Does anybody have any questions about that? And uh, well, this is Patricia. Yes, you Patricia. Said the person already has to be in school? Who, in order to qualify for the work study program, they have to be in school. Okay. Okay. Now, if you find somebody who's not in school, and they can't, the, the purpose of this program is for people who want to go to school, but they can't go to school because they don't have a job or something like that. So this right. is created to, to enable people to be able to go to school. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's a lot of veterans that even though their tuition will be paid by the government, mm -hmm. they still need money to live. Like a stipend. Here in Las Vegas, there are 500 National Guard people who are unemployed, they want to go to school, but they can't go to school because they're not employed. Even though tuition would be free for them, they still can't afford to go to school because they need money for, you know, life. So that's what these two programs are designed for. There are other programs for veterans, too. This is just two programs that the VA spoke to us about last week that they spent half an hour talking about these two programs. So Ed, there are all kinds of other programs. And I have a question. Yes. So if someone comes because of us and enrolls in Larson, 
Yes. That, that would be a qualified program? Correct. Or? Okay. They enroll in Larson, and then um, um, we'll get them their job, and the government will pay them $8 an hour to do basically, uh, what does the requirement say, Rick? Processing VA paperwork or something? Correct. Okay. So, in quotes, processing VA paperwork, and I put it in quotes, rock and roll quotes, um, because it is, uh, um, it's a very general statement. There's not a specific, like, what paper. It's doing stuff. It, the VA is trying to make it easy for people to do stuff. For example, so the person processing VA paperwork could be helping vets fill out the paperwork to go to school. Could be uh, recruiting other vets and helping them fill out paperwork. So it's a very, the government is trying to make it easy for veterans to be able to go to school and pay them to do it. Okay, what's the next question? Is there a contact number um, that we can contact someone to get clarification on this program? Yeah, well, the person to talk to there would be Jose and Rose, Stephanie, Sherry Kennedy. Uh, Jose is our vet rep in the Bay Area. I mean, not the Bay Area, in Southern California. Okay, so, so Rose... Okay, we'll check with Rose. Yeah, Rose has Jose's information. Jose was at the meeting last week. Jose participated in the meeting last week. Um, he was very clear because he is a veteran. He's much clearer than I am on what needs to be done, but we all got the paperwork. Um, Sherry told me that she left a copy. Sherry? I don't know if it's uh, with Stephanie. Is Stephanie still in with somebody? Yes. Did you leave the VA stuff from last week? Yes. No, she's still in the meeting. Okay, so Sherry just said she left two copies. One, there are gray folders, gray paper folders. One should be in Long Beach and one should be in Santa Fe Springs. It has the programs. What are they called, Rick? Do you have the folder here? One is, pathways. one is called Pathways, and the other one is Work Study. Okay, they are in the gray folders that um, should be. There should be one in Santa Fe Springs. Okay, we'll we'll uh, check with Rose. Okay, otherwise, Rick, can you send me a link? Send me an email with the link. Or post the link. Actually, post the link that you found the form on. Right. Post that on the uh, Wolfpack community, and then I will share it with staff. Okay. So you know, um, the this is an this is a great program for veterans who want to go back to school but can't afford to, and everybody should know should know at least one veteran. And probably every veteran might know somebody who can do this. So if we, you know, if we uh, work together and try to accomplish something, I think we can get some veterans help them out with the government program. Okay. Anybody have any questions about any anything in the last week that you want to discuss? Anything in on the meditation? What's happening? Any questions? No questions in Santa Fe Springs. Okay, good. Right. Long Beach. Okay, well, we're a little bit early, but I think um, since it's the last day of the week, we can end early. Any questions here? Anybody have any comments? Questions, comments? Yes, Rick. Do you know that the government will pay for any to Okay, so Rick's question was Do we know if they will pay for any vet? To go to Larson. And the answer is it's not any vet. It's almost any vet. Let's say you're a Civil War veteran who happens to be alive. <laughs> they don't have any GI Bill 
There's no benefits for those people. And there's probably not any benefits for World War I veterans. But there's a lot of programs for post 9-11 uh, benefits, but this would be that's a good question. So this is something that the vet rep would have to answer. But the message I got from the VA people yesterday was uh, virtually most people can go to school and have it paid by the government. Most veterans can, and if they are in school, virtually every veteran will qualify for the work study. If we find a veteran where there is a, a tuition issue, we will figure out a way so that they can be in school. You know, we can give them scholarship, we can give them loans. there's a lot of things we can do. So that's a good question and let's just endeavor not to have tuition be an obstacle to going to school. Okay, well, we can figure out a way to make it happen. So let's see, any other questions? Okay, good. Well, then we'll call it a week. Four, four minutes early. We'll call it a week. Thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll pick it up Monday with, I don't remember which Google app. But it'll be a Google app. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Have a good week. Thank you.